Hi guys, it's been a while. I hope everybody's doing well. I got my first Unity tutorial for you today. Um, as some of you might know, I've been working on a mobile game in my spare time for, I don't know, a little while now. I'm not rushing it. Um, I want it to turn out as good as it possibly can. I've been just taking my time and, and doing it when I have spare time. But I've been using Unity for about, I don't know, three years now, and I, I finally feel like I'm at a point where I have a, enough knowledge where I can start sharing it with people. So uh, we're just going to do a quick tutorial about Shader Graph today because I feel like it's an area that's there's not a lot of info yet, and I'm already kind of used to Node-style workflow, so it kind of fits, fits pretty well. So... What, well, so what I want, what I needed to do, I for for my game that I'm making, I needed a way for two people. It's a head-to-head -head kind of game, and I needed a way for two people to take input, and I didn't want to have to deal with using the phone keyboard. I think that's just it wouldn't work right for the game. So I needed to come up with a way to take input, and this is the way I I needed I needed a component that could be used on for both players at the same time. So. Let me just clone this, and let me rotate it. And put it up at the top. So this tutorial today is just going to deal with creating this text bar here that scrolls with shader graph, and you can see how it fades out. The transparency fades out to nothing on the edges. And the A, the center text, turns red. So you can see when I scroll here. And then we can add text. And this was just what I came up with to deal with um, taking user input from two people at one time. And I didn't want to deal with the keyboard. I thought that was kind of an ugly way to go about doing this type of thing. So this is what I came up with. And we're not going to be doing, I'm only going to be doing the, the spinning part. Here's what we're going to be making today, just so everybody gets it. We're going to be making this. It would just, it's too complex to get into the code and all that the way it was. So this is what we're going to make. And so let's just get started. Hopefully you guys get something out of this. I know I haven't been able to find too much shader graph tutorials and this was pretty much the first thing that I've run into during this project that I'm doing that I thought was worth using shader graph for so that's why I figured I would do a tutorial on it okay so this is what we're gonna make this effect right here now if you want to go in the input and text and making it say you have a component that you can use in multiple places then you're gonna have to put a little more work into it but this is just the shader graph aspect of this part of this effect and then a little bit of code just to get the rotation going properly okay so I guess first thing is, is let me just show you the model that we're going to be using so this is the model here And I, there's a, I could have generated this procedurally in Unity, but since I'm doing this on my own, I kind of like switching between 3D and, and doing it by code. It's a little less code for me to have to worry about handling. So that's kind of why I did it with this, this way with, a, with UVs and a, an actual 3D mesh. Plus, whenever using text in Unity, I, I kind of like, while well, text, it's going to be 3D. I kind of like doing it like this. Um, so th that's all I wanted to show. Just say so you've understood the object that I'm dealing with here and the texture and the UVs. So if I just, uh, you can see that's what the texture looks like. Okay, so I'm just going to close out here. I'm going to go into Unity. And I'm going to open up a, a new... Uh, I'm going to create a new project, and I'm just going to call this uh, Shader 
graph. That's good enough. And I'm going to use a 2D template. Now, in order to use Shader Graph, you, you, you need to use the new scriptable rendering pipeline. And um, so that would be, you could choose the, for my, for my use, it would be the Lightwave Render Pipeline, this one here. But I'm just going to choose 2D, and I'll show you how to add. I think it's good to know how to add this after the fact. So I'm just going to go to 2D, and I'm going to create project. So the only way you can use Shader Graph is if you're using the new scriptable render pipeline. So if you don't have those packages installed, you're not going to be able to use Shader Graph. So it's just that's one thing that's important to know. So I guess the first thing we want to do is let's just create a new folder here. Just call it render underscore. I'll just do pipe. And I'm going to go into there and I'm just going to go create. Well, first thing. I need to go to my Windows Package Manager, and I'm going to go to All, and I'm just going to download right here the lightweight render pipeline, and I'm going to hit Install. I'm just going to take a couple seconds. And that's all. Okay, so the lightweight render pipeline is installed. So the first thing we got to do here is now in our render pipe here, you'll see I've created this folder. I'm just going to go to create rendering lightweight pipeline asset, and I'm just going to put it in here. I'm just going to call it, I don't know, LW pipe. And what we need to do with this, I'm just going to turn off anti-aliasing. I don't need it. Um, we don't need shadows. And the rest is good. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go to um, uh, Edit, Project Settings, Graphics. And right here you can see where we can input our custom scriptable render pipeline. And I'm just going to use their pre-made one here, the Lightwave Render Pipeline. And that's pretty much all there is to it. Now, the next thing we need to do is I need to import that object that I had. So, and it's just an OBJ. So I'm just going to go import new asset. And let's see. And it's this one here, hex spinner. You know what, I'm going to do it a different way. I'm going to drag the whole folder in here. I like doing that better. So I'm just going to drag that whole folder right here. Oh. And here we go. We get our object and our surface. And I'm just going to drag our object into the scene. Now, let me uh, separate these. And I just want to make this actual object much smaller. Let's go to 0.2, 2, 0.22, 0.3, 0.4, 0.5, 0.6, 0.7, 0.8, 0.9, 0.10, 0.11, 0.12, 0.13, 0.14, 0.15, 0.16, 0.17, 0.18, 0.19, 0.20, 0.21, 
to this. So I'm just going to create a new material. Material. And I'm just going to call this spinner. M-A-T. And what we need to do here now is I'm going to drag it on my and we're using that material now. There's no light in the scene. That's why we can't see anything. So what we want to do is I'm going to create. I'm going to go create and I'm going to get a shader here and I'm going to create this unlit graph and this will create my shader graph network and I'm just going to call it unlit spinner shader G. and now if we go in here we can uh, well first thing what we need to do is we need to go into our material and we need to actually set the material to reference that shader which is unlit shader right here this one so now you'll see that our shader graph network is affecting our material which is applied to the object here so now the next thing we want to do is we want to go into our graph and I'm just gonna scroll down a little bit alright just get some of this stuff out of our way Okay, so the first thing we need to do here is is we need to get that texture in here because that's one thing we definitely need. So I'm just going to drag this. Also, before I do that, I want to make sure and set the sprite here. I want it to be default. And I don't need knit maps. And I can hit apply. And what we can do here is I'm going to get, I'm just going to drag that texture in. Now, it's not showing up because of the way the Unity handles the alpha here, so you can't see it. But if I, one thing I want to do is I want to go into this unlit material here, and I'm going to settings. I'm going to turn this on, or turn this on transparent. And if I take this alpha here and I go into this alpha, you'll see that it'll cut it out. And if I save the asset, you'll see it cuts it out over here. Now, you could do this with a clip as well and use the opaque shader, but, but I'm going to do a fade here. I'm going to also fade the transparency on the edges. So that's why I'm using the transparency. And, I mean, there's not going to be, for this scene, well, at least in my project, this scene doesn't have much in it. So I'm not really too worried about performance. It's only for two people to enter their information and then it loads a new scene in my use case so I'm not too worried about it being super efficient here it'll be fine for for what I needed to do so now the next thing we want to do is we need we want to color that a and one way we can do this is we can get the normal of our underlying points so I'm just gonna create node I'm gonna get normal normal vector normal create normal vector and we want this to be in world coordinates. Now, they may have already some sort of incidence, normal incidence um, material or node, but I don't even know if they do because I haven't gone through them all yet. But for, for my purposes, all we really need to do is we need to get a create node dot product. And I'm going to dot the normal with just one on the Z, negative one on the Z. And you'll see that gives me this. So now what we can do here is I can get a we'll get a gradient, sampled gradient here. And I can take this output from our dot product and go into this time for our sample gradient. And for our gradient, what we need here is we could just choose our colors. So I'm just gonna do from And I also want this to be fixed, make this reddish. And then we'll make this one 
fixed as well. Make sure they're both fixed. Okay. So now if I do this with my gradient, and I drag this all the way down to here to about right like that, And we go into, and keep in mind, our normal vector here is set to world. That's important for this to work properly. And if we just go right into our color, and I'm going to save asset, and you'll see that gives us that. So now you'll see if we rotate our, Now you'll see beans that our rotation isn't quantized. It's not a. Uh, it's giving us multiple ones at the same time now, and I could even fix that in here by making the gradient even smaller. Let's just do that real quick. Make this at point nine. Enter. So now you should see that. It won't even, it'll only light up one, but when we quantize our rotation with our script, it'll just always, it'll only go in increments of um, pi times 2 divided by the number of tiles, which is 49 in my case. But we'll get to that in a second. We still got a little bit more we got to do here. So, I, wanna, I also want to, one thing I want to do is... I want to go into my camera. I hate this blue color. I wish they would just change that. Is there a way to setting to change that and keep it changed by default? It probably is. So I'm just going to turn my camera to that color. And for my text here, I'm going to go to that white. I'm just going to make it a little bit muted. Okay, that's good. Maybe make that red a little brighter. If I can get to it. Okay, that's good enough. So now, the next thing we got to do here is we want to fade this out. So we want it to fade from fully opaque here to transparent as it goes out to the edges. And I think that added a lot to it. I think it looked a lot nicer once I did that. So I was, was kind of happy once I did that. It looked a lot better. So what we're going to do here is we're just going to uh, we'll copy this gradient here. Control-C, Control-V. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take the gradient in here. Or in, just take the same thing, dot product into the time, and we're just going to change the gradient. So, we want it to be blended, and we want this to be from black to white. Okay. So, now what we want to do is is we want to get a uh, create node. We're going to get a blend, and what we want to do is we want to blend this with our texture here. And we're going to go into the alpha with that, and we also want to change this overlay mode to multiply. And you can see we're already starting to get the effect. What we can do is we could just turn this gradient up. If you see if we could start if we start dragging this up this way. That's probably pretty good there. And we we'll just save asset. Yeah, that's pretty good. Maybe even a little more. Might drag it a little more. Save asset. 
So, that is pretty much all there is to it. So, basically, it's all based around the normal and the dot product. Getting pretty much like an incidence angle based on the facing the camera, which is just negative Z in this case. Um, and then all we're doing then is we're using that to color the A or the, the letter that's facing the facing closest to that that normal, that negative Z normal. And then we're doing the same thing. We're getting the dot product and we're using this gradient to uh, fade out the text when it gets close to the edges. And we're using that to pump into the alpha here. So that's all there is for that part of it. So now there, there's only one other thing here. And I'm just going to make a script here, create C Shark script, and we'll just call this spinner. Con Let me create a new folder for that. So now all we need to do now, don't take this as the best way to uh, to program this. I just want to give you I want to give you somewhat of a completed thing. The one I did was for my for my game is much more complex than what I'm showing you. But I did want to show you how you can quantize this rotation because I think that's a cool effect when you're when you're especially when you're just lighting up the center one like this. Because like I said, if I go into my spinner here. You'll see that kind of goes on and off once because the normal doesn't line up exactly till it gets to there and then. So, so I just want to make sure I set that to 180. I forgot about that. That flips it so that I'm right on the A. Now, what I'm gonna the script's gonna go on this spinner final, so that's what I'm gonna be rotating. So I could just do that now. If I just drag this script, put it on here, just open that up, and it's not that long a script. So, I mean, and like I said, don't take this as any sort of best way to be going about doing this. I'm just trying to. This is basically just about doing shader graph stuff. So I'm just going to need an int. I'm going to need P1, comma, P2, comma, P3, comma, current, rot, step. Oh, I messed up. P2. And then I'm also going to need a bull spinning. And I'm also going to need uh, const int count. And I'm going to make that 49. And I'm going to need a const float step angle. And I'm going to make that one equal to 360 float divided by count. Okay, I think that's all we need as far as variables go. So in here, I'm just going to make a quick function called handle input. Now, there is no function named that yet, but we're going to make that right now. Okay, so the first thing we need is we're going to do void handle input. Uh, let's do the implementation here. So, the first thing we need to do is we need to find out if the mouse buttons down. So I could say if 
input dot get mouse button. I need mouse button because that will return the whole time that it's pushed down instead of just the first frame. And that's kind of important for the way that I'm doing this. And we need mouse button zero. And then we want to say if the mouse button's pushed down, if the mouse button's pushed down, what we want to do is we want to find out if we're already spinning. So if not spinning, then we want to set spinning equal to true equals true and we can do p1 equals input or actually we're going to cast this in to input dot mouse position um, dot x divided by count here and then what we can do is we could say else if we're already spinning, so if spinning equals true, what we can do is we can say P2 equals and the same thing here. And then what we can say is P3 equals P1 minus P2. And then we can use that P3 and our step count to increment our rotation. So what we can do is we could say, now I'm... I'm, when I say transform here, I'm getting the transform component off of the object that I drug the script on. So you'll see when we go back there. So if we go transform dot uh, local rotation dot or equals quaternion dot Euler. And then we can just pass in our, so that would be, we want it to rotate, uh, so it would be 0, F, comma, 0, F, comma, and then we need, so that would be uh, P3 plus current rot step. And then we would need to multiply that times the step step angle. And then we need the last part of our vector there. So it'll be 0F. And then, okay, so all this is doing is just we're rotating the, the object that this script's transform. The object this script is on, we're going to rotate it on the y-axis by this amount. And the x and the z are going to just stay at zero. So now there's one thing else we need to do here, and that is down here after this right in here, we can say if input dot get button up, mouse button up, zero, what we can do here is just set spinning equal to false, and we also want to update our current rotation step, so we could say current rot step plus equals P3. And 
I think that should be everything we need. So we're, all we're doing right here is just we're incrementing, we're accumulating that every time we let go of the mouse, we're accumulating this P3 in this current rotation step. So that way when we start our next rotation, we're starting from this current rotation step here. Instead of, otherwise it would just jump back to A every time we let go and click the mouse again. So, and I mean, there is more elegant ways to go about doing this. And like I said, the one that I did was more, uh, a little more complex to set up, but this is a good start. So if we just go back to Unity, and make sure everything goes without an error. Now if I hit play, you should see we get this. So that's all there is to it. I hope you guys got something out of it. Um, if I mean, if people enjoyed this or got something out of it, I'll probably be making more as uh, I've been working on my game a lot more lately. So I've been in the Unity a lot. So hope you guys enjoyed it. Take care.